Yes. By using the same actions that you use there, that's the only way. You but this is much denser text than that. And, 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 and uh, this also makes the point about, remember one of our types of reading aloud activities was the play. And I found the plays to be really great. Yeah. See, I would take uh, something like this and even try to write it as a play. Like I said, you know, with the Year 7 kids and the solar system, writing a play where the different planets talk with each other, particularly about how they move and, and how warm they are and where they go and how big they are and their colour. Now, we can, we can write dramas. See, I can do that in Year 10 physics with uh, electrons and, and, and different compounds. I mean, we can use this in all sorts of different situations. I would use, uh, I, as a teacher now, <laughs> rushing towards senility, I would be using the play form much more than I ever would have in the past. Because I think it engages the language and, and I would be, if, look, teaching year 10 maths and I wanted students to sketch parabolas and trigonometric graphs, I would at least want the children to act them out. I would at least want one child to be a parabola and one child to be a, a, sinus, a, sin, a sinusoidal curve, you know, a sine curve, another child to be a straight line and talk with each other, talk about their similarities and differences. I'll tell you they'd learn a lot more than sitting just writing in their textbooks about finding, you know, the, the X and Y turning points or whatever. They really would learn much more in these ways. So I think there is a real place for this as a genre for learning. No. No. So you, you, about ninety percent is okay because then they still get the meaning of it. So that the essential things were the woven things. They were the things about the fire. They were the things about the barter and the actual. It's it's a good it's a good point, Phil, because the um it's it's a really good point. The the ninety percent is determined by the words, and often that's but what's overlooked is it's all also determined by the sentences in which the words appear. Now this text actually the, the sentences are actually quite straightforward. Um, remember we said about one event sentences and two event sentences? A lot of the sentences here are one event sentences, or at most two. Long, long ago, the people in the Bougainville district had no fire. So we know the one event, the people had no fire. They shivered all night, one event. And, and being joined by and is easy. That's just a, a, a conjoined <laughs> sentence. And they ate their food raw. Now, that's the, these are comparatively easy sentences. These are one event sentences, and, and they're direct voice. See, they're not passive voice. And the food was eaten raw. That's not there. They ate the food raw. You know what I'm saying. So, um, you know, now there were, there were the intricacies of the play, and I really did feel we needed to talk about some of these things. And what was great was, was Jay there knew that one was a plot, because you probably didn't hear her. But she said, oh, the plot. And, she, and although they didn't know what props meant, and remember, one, one key issue for these girls, and this came through again and again today, and one thing that we're really going to target in our first session, looking at the low achievers, is phonological knowledge. Phonological knowledge. A knowledge of the sound patterns in the language. They are critical. Hugh, who was here at lunchtime, you know, I've worked with Hugh for about 10 years, and Hugh's doing his PhD with me. And uh, we did a big study with 600 uh, grade one children went into grade two about eight years ago. And what we're trying to do is to look at a whole lot of factors and see which ones predict reading success, you know, in, in accuracy and comprehension. And the two factors that come through in, in all of the research that, that we've got here uh, is um, phonological knowledge and the rapid naming. And they're the two key causes of reading difficulty, dys dyslexia, in, if you like, you know, word reading difficulties in, in the research as well. So children who, this has nothing to do with reading, children who have difficulties detecting that there's a s in nest or that there's a t in stamp, children who have difficulties doing that or who have difficulties rhyming, 
you know, hearing the four words hat, fat, pot and cat and picking out the odd one out. Kids who have difficulties doing that at age four are much, much more likely to have reading difficulties to be in the tail in your group at age nine. Now, uh, most of the girls here had pronunciation, were not pronouncing words the way we would pronounce them. Remember one, raw was raw. Now, the, the, the issue for us is whether or not uh, the children are still able to retrieve the meaning, even when they say rao or whatever. She, it, it, she didn't, she didn't no. She no, no, no. So we really need to work on for the phonological knowledge. Now, um, we've been doing a lot, I don't want to keep talking about Ben's, but we've been doing a lot of that in the Ben style cluster and really getting very good results. And I want to, with you guys, I want to talk about how we can build these things into something like uh, w w why desert's dry. You see, there'll be some children who will look at desert and they'll see D, cert. Now, how in this world do you get desert out of D, cert? Or you look at another word there. Um, generally, why isn't that gen er alley? There'll be some children who, when they're reading that out, will say gen er alley. They won't have twigged. And I was doing this with a year seven boy on Tuesday night at, at Orbost. He had real difficulty getting from gen er alley to generally. He'd never learnt how to say one of the vowels really fast. How to say it as uh. And yet we know that's the most common vowel in the English language. If you say what vowel occurs most often in English, it's not a or a or a, and it's not o or o, it's the uh. And a lot of children at Belfield, we ha I had to teach the kids explicitly how to go from, you know, gen, er, alley to generally. And they need to develop the awareness of how to say some vowels really fast. How to go from another one that this year seven boy was having on, on Tuesday night was corridor. 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 And we looked at pin and pine. Which one takes you longer to say? Pin or pine? And in English, we say some vowels really short. And so we tried saying cor i door. Didn't sound like a word he knew. And then cor a door. Yes, it does. Corridor. It was easy. But see, a lot of kids won't have learnt that. And, 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 other, and that is often not... How to get to schwa often isn't taught in primary schools. You know, that's not taught explicitly in the primary schools. So unless a child has had the chance to really see where the pattern is, and we're not talking anything about reading at this point, are we? It's oral language. It's getting the oral language right. So that's these girls really, you know, it's, it's the oral language that they're needing. Uh, we, we did a parent uh, session at, in, in, in Bairnsdale uh, last week, and um, the book that I was given, a big book, it was Androcles and the Lion. And I asked one of the parents how to say it. And I should have thought. And anyway, the, the parents said it as Androcles. And I had to run with that because there's no way I was going to start calling it Androcles. And, uh, you know, well, I just wasn't. It well, well, it became Androcles. And, uh, but it made the point that w when, when the girls were reading this, they had to frame up how to say the word. And this is the phonological knowledge again. How do you frame up how to say the word? And so many of these words were causing them difficulty. Framing up how to say them. I, I, I don't want to um, really push the, 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 the oral language bit, but I guess it's a real paranoia of mine that if we don't get the oral language right, the kids are going to have real difficulties with it.